Hi, so welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about equivalent payments for compound interest. Uh, I have a question here. Uh, we'll quickly go through it. I'll explain, I will explain the ins and outs of it. And uh, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. So let's get started with that question now. Robin and Barney invested $50,000 now in a retirement savings fund. They're currently age 59 and 61 respectively. Both want to receive equal amount of payments when each of them reaches the age of 65. If the interest rate is 6% compounded quarterly, what is the equal amount of payment they will receive? So before we begin with this question, we need to calculate how many more years does Robin and Barney have until they retire? So with that being said, let's calculate that. Robin wants to retire at 65 and she is currently 59 years old. So she has six more years until she retires. And Barney is wants to retire at 65 but he's 61 years old so he has four years until he retires so with that being said let's draw the timeline the most important thing now zero is now right is today four years from now Barney is going to retire and six years from now, Robin is going to retire. So, and our interest rate is 6% compounded quarterly. So it's 6% quarterly, quarterly, right? So what we need to note is that we need to find, like our previous questions with I did in the previous videos where I calculate the future value and present value, we were given a specific time frame. They wanted us to calculate or they wanted to know that what value, what would, what would this amount be at the end of four years? That would be future value. What would this amount be if it was invested four years ago, which would be present value? In this case, each of them are retiring at different time frames, but they want an equal amount of payment. So it's up to us to decide a focal date when and a focal date is technically to calculate all our time value of money to that specific time point time frame so in, in order to do that what we can say is there's technically three focal dates we have one here which is today we can calculate all the value of money today uh, not the value the all the value of equivalent amount today we can calculate all the value of equivalent amount when Barney retires or all the value of equivalent amount when Robin retires. Regardless of the point, focal point that you choose, the total value, the equivalent payment value that we'll calculate would be the same in each of the cases. It's just the way we set up the linear equation that varies in each of the three points, right? In each of the three cases. So I'll show you the first case. If we were to choose the present value, what we oh, before we start off with that, let's say that since they're earning equal amount of payments, we can say that let x be equal amount of payment. We really don't know what the equal amount is because let's be honest, there's two years here additional that's going to accumulate more for $50,000 and we don't know how much interest that is going to be and if we want to calculate equivalent amount we don't know what that is so in order in order for us to do that what we can say is let x be the equal amount of payment right so with that being said and if we're looking at one which is our, if we're looking setting one as our focal date we can say that 50,000 is equal to present value of Barney retiring at retiring in six years at six percent plus present value of Robin retiring in 
Oh, present value of Barney retiring in four years, my bad, and Robin retiring in six years at 6%. Now, we know our present value equation is PV is equal to FV over 1 plus I to the power of N. We can also write this as FV is equal to 1 plus I to the power of negative N. So, uh, with that being said, now, PV of now, we don't know the present value of x, right? We don't know the present value of x for both cases. So why don't we just calculate the present value for $1 first, and then we'll be able to directly get the, excuse me, directly get the equal amount payment, equal amount of payment for each Robin and Robin and Barney for this, for this 50,000 that they're investing. So with that said, the present value states that we're investing one dollar, one dollar into one plus six percent divided by four to the power of Barney's retiring in four years, so four times four, which is a negative four, plus present value of Robin retiring in six years at six percent, right? So present value of Robin is also $1 at 1 plus 6% divided by 4 to the power of negative 6 times 4x, 50,000 to carry forward. Okay, so with that being said, let's get started. Now it's just simple math. So 6 divided by 100, divide that by 4, and we add 1 to that. To the power of 4 times 4 is 16, which is negative, and we will get 0.78803103x plus we will get 6 divided by 100 divided by 4, add 1 to that to the power of 6 times 4 is negative 24, 24 negative is equal to 0 0.699543926, x right? So with that being said, we'll just add 0.788 Zero three one zero three nine. The two x's, and we get fifty thousand is equal to one point four eight seven five seven four nine five nine x. That we just take fifty thousand divided by one point four eight seven five seven four nine five nine, and we get. The equivalent amount of payment is $33,611.75. Now, we can verify this using the second approach. If we were to use focal data number two, where Barney retires, in that case, what we'll have to do is set future value of 50000 to four years when Barney retires at 6% is equal to Barney retiring is X payment. We don't need to calculate any future value, present value of that. Plus, present value of Robin retiring in two years times. Now it's two years, also at 6%, right? So with that being said, let's get started with that. So here we need to calculate the future value. So it's 50,000 into one plus 6% divided by 4 to the power of, now it's compounding frequency is 4 and time frames also 4, so that's still 16, but in this case we're calculating future value, so it's not negative, plus x, uh, x equals to x plus present value of Robbins, so Robbins is, we're going to use again $1.00 just for the purpose to figure out what it is. So $1 into 1 plus 6% divided by 4 to the power of 
4 times 2 is still the present value, x. So with that being said, let's quickly calculate it. So it's 6 divided by 100, divide that by 4, add 1 to that, to the power of 16, times 50,000. So we get 63449.27738 is equal to uh, 6 divided by 100, divided by 4, Add 1 to that, to the power of 8 negative, gives us x plus 0.88771124x. And we just add the x's together, and we get 1.88771124x, 63,449.27738. And we're just going to simply divide one88 seven seven one 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 two four on each side to find out for x point eight eight seven seven one 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 two four and i'm just going to store this in my calculator so that i can quickly recall it so it's sixty three thousand four hundred and forty nine dollars and twenty seven two seven seven three nine divided by recall one and we get x is equal to $33,611.75. You see, regardless of the math, regardless of the method we choose, whether we choose the focal point at number one or focal point number two, the equal event payment comes out to be the exactly the same. Now, I leave it up to you to figure out the equation for number three. And if you do it, comment down in the question below, in the video below, for me to know and you never know i might just give you a shout out okay so great if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up i'd really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel and that's it